Hey, this is Sam from Sure. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about all of the preferences that manage how frequency coordination works in Wireless Workbench 6. So hold on to your hats, put down your coffee, because the discussion of preferences may just blow your mind. Uh, no, all, all kidding aside, frequency coordination is a really powerful part of Wireless Workbench. Uh, you've got the power to coordinate frequencies for Sure and third-party systems and deploy those frequencies in uh, environments that make managing a lot of frequencies and congested spectrum practical when, you know, you know in the olden days you'd be doing a lot of uh, math by pen and paper and uh, it would be an impractical thing. So software has really unlocked the ability for frequency coordination to take new shape. And wireless workbench is built to cater to a large array of customers. We've got, you know, professional customers coordinating frequencies for huge globally televised events, as well as managing, you know, 10 to 20 channels in a small house of worship or in a small school. So in order to cater to such a large audience of use cases and workflows, we've built a lot of preferences and configurable aspects into the calculator so that users can you make this thing sing the way they want it to. Um, or really get the results that they're looking for. So in this video, I just want to talk through the preferences that we surface in the calculator to give you a better understanding of how they work and when you might want to use them. Like most applications on Mac or Windows, you know, you can explicitly open the preferences dialog. Um, and in, in Workbench's preferences dialog, we've got a lot you can configure. In the coordination tab, though, that's where all of the coordination focused preferences reside for the application. And by coordination, I mean for frequency coordination. Basically, these control how all the features in the frequency coordination tab are going to work. So within this tab, we've got three subtabs. Uh, they split out the preferences into three categories, general, coordination order, and compatibility level. So let's actually go backwards because this is, uh, we'll, we'll go from the simplest to the, uh, to the most ornate or the most complex. Compatibility level, you can think of it like a preference that dictates the, uh, the amount of personal space different systems want when coordinating frequencies. So if you're familiar with Wireless Workbench, it has the capability of coordinating frequencies for sure and third-party systems, which is really cool. Now, by default, when you, um, when you add systems into Wireless Workbench, you've got this control called compatibility level. And you can see that when you select a particular device, you can choose one of three compatibility profiles to apply to this particular system. What this really means is like how much personal space, how much spacing room around this frequency, or these types of frequencies, should the calculator allow? Um, you can imagine, you know, I like to think of it like a party. If you like to go to a party and you're one of these people who wants a lot of personal space, you don't want to be too close to anybody, you want your little bubble to be protected. Um, in the frequency domain, we would call that a robust frequency, meaning there's the most spacing around frequencies like that. Whereas if you're uh, someone who doesn't mind having little personal space and likes to get right up on your friends, um, maybe more of you can fit in that little party, um, but each of you is going to have less space overall allocated to yourself. So these compatibility levels are uh, attributes that every equipment profile in Wireless Workbench has by default. Uh, there are three of them. Uh, more robust, uh, robust, standard, more frequencies. So uh, I'm actually going to jump back to the coordination preferences with this gear as a little quick shortcut, just a fun little uh, secret for you there. So by default, uh, each of the systems that Wireless Workbench knows about has a coordination, uh, a compatibility level default setting. Uh, and by default, they're all set to standard, which is our middle of the road spacing. But let's say every time you coordinate frequencies for QLXD, uh, you know that the more frequency setting works perfectly well for you and you're going to want more frequencies to always be selected by default, you can make this change in preferences. And now every time when you add QLXD, by default it will inherit this compatibility spacing. You can always change it after the fact, but this just sets it by default. Coordination order is uh, another thing. We've actually, we have a dedicated video on coordination order, which I recommend you check out. But by default, um, we try to sequence the order in which devices and device types get frequencies based on their agility or the, the total number of tunable frequencies each of these systems has. So for example, you know, a Sure system like Sure KCX or Sure SVX doesn't have a ton of tunable frequencies. And so because that system is generally less flexible, we want to give it frequencies before we give a system that has a lot more um, opportunity or a lot more choices for tunable frequencies like Sure UHFR. 
So this order is by default configured based on the number of tunable frequencies a system has, but you can easily customize that if you want to select a system and jog it up or jog it down. You have control on a series basis, and all of those are listed here, as well as deciding which bands of a particular system are going to be coordinated first. Uh, for certain systems, we have this thing called RF profile. That's another video, so we'll get into it later. But if uh, systems have more than one RF profile, that too can be determined in the coordination order. So again, you know, we've got uh, the video on coordination order talks about it more. But while users can ad hoc change the coordination order right from within the coordination workspace, if you want the default order to be different, you can specify that in this coordination order preferences view. And now the general tab kind of has a, a grab bag of a lot of different preferences. We've got some other videos that talk about these uh, in more detail, so I'm just going to give a high level overview. The default country and the default unit of distance are measures that really have to do with TV and broadcast station avoidance. Choosing your default country will specify the country selected when you go into the TV channels dialog, and that lets you look up uh, your proximity to broadcast stations based on whatever country you're in. Default unit distance, I don't think I need to explain that one. Automatic backups, we've got a dedicated video on that and I recommend you check it out, but basically turning this on will have the calculator find all the frequencies you asked for first, and then once it's exhausted its effort trying to find those, it'll go back and ask for as many extra backups for all of the systems in your coordination workspace, but only after it's uh, searched for the ones it's requested. These exclusion detection from applied scan data preferences have to do with loading scan data into uh, the coordination view. And, and when you've loaded that scan data, this top preference will generate exclusion ranges and scan peaks from those thresholds, basically saying scans that go above the red line, it'll uh, frequencies won't be placed there. And any peaks that go above the orange line, we're going to actually assume transmitters are there and give them uh, an even wider berth with channel and or intermod spacings based on this preference which you've set. So this classifies scan peaks above the scan threshold. Uh, basically what it does is it tells the calculator, hey, any peaks that go above this orange line, I want you to apply this equipment profile to those peaks. And users can change from these a couple stock ones that we provide, turn the feature off altogether, or select a custom profile that you either you've created or is another one from our equipment profile database. Uh, these TV channel preferences are pretty self-explanatory, but basically what they say is, Whenever there's a TV exclusion, which you can see I've done here uh, by this uh, excluding like TV 17 in this case, uh, please leave uh, an extra 100 kilohertz from the leading edge of that TV station, so that's on the lower frequency at range, and uh, we can choose to use the same or a different um, sort of guard band above or below TV stations with this preference here. I know in certain countries like uh, Japan, I believe, or Brazil, you need to give a different amount of space on the leading and the trailing edge or the lower and the higher edge of the TV station. Uh, where in the United States, uh, or just in general, if you've got certain best practices, you can choose to keep them the same. So this is basically how much extra room on either side of a TV station do you want to make sure frequencies don't go into. And uh, last but not least, if you're not sleeping yet, maybe this will put you to sleep, the advanced configuration. These are super low-level properties of the calculator. The number of passes and the maximum fruitless experiments, these are, think of them like algorithmic computer science terms that basically say, how many calculations do you want the calculator to do before it sort of gives up and says, you know what, I've done as many sample calculations as I can, the results I have now are the best I'm going to find. Uh, Explaining these kind of goes deeper into the how, how the calculator works, but what I'll leave you with is this. The higher these numbers are, the longer the calculator will chew and chew and chew on trying to find the best possible results, um, and the, the more the, the more time it's going to take effectively. And, you know, if, you, if you're experienced with the workbench calculator, you'll know that it's going to find you probably 80 or 95 percent of the frequencies it's going to find very, very quickly, and then what can take a lot longer is squeezing out those extra couple frequencies at the very end. So if you really uh, want the calculator to squeeze out as many extra frequencies and you're willing to wait, you can increase these numbers. Uh, but to be honest, whatever the default setting is, I, I actually ducked mine down a little bit just so the calculator finishes quicker. But yeah, so that's an overview of the preferences in uh, that feed the calculator in Wireless Workbench 6. If you've got questions, you're confused, or you're personally offended based on the amount of detail I spent going into these, uh, be sure to let me know. I'm happy to talk about them in more detail, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of all the things going on here. So anyways, hope this tutorial was helpful. We'll see you next time. Thanks.